this meeting, we're going to talk about the first derivative test. Call it Fermat's theorem tells us that if we're trying to find a local max or a local min, that we can look at the critical numbers. But it doesn't tell us how to determine if a critical number represents a local max, a local min, or neither. Well, we're going to use the MVT to help solve that question. But first, let's go and review some algebra. We need to remember the idea of increasing and decreasing functions. Now, geometrically, the idea of an increasing function means that as you go from left to right, that the you're going to go uphill on the graph. That is, as the x-coordinates increase, the y-coordinates, or the function values, have to get bigger as well. Now, decreasing is very much related ge geometrically. You're just going downhill the gra on the graph when the function is decreasing. And algebraically, that means as x increases, as x gets larger, when the function is decreasing, then the y has to get smaller. So let's make the connection to the derivative. We know that in our definition that we're going to assume our definition of increasing and decreasing functions, we assume that b is greater than a. In other words, the x values are getting larger. b is a bigger x value than a is, which means b minus a is always positive. Well, if b minus a is positive, that tells me that the whenever f of b minus f of b is positive, then f prime of c must be positive as well. And on the other hand, if f of b minus f of a is negative, then f prime of c must be negative as well. So f prime of c must have the same sign as f of b minus f of a. And since when f is increasing, the y-coordinates are increasing, so f of b minus f of a is positive. And on the other hand, if f is decreasing, f of b minus f of a is negative. So now that's our connection, that a function is increasing on an interval if and only if the derivative is positive for all x in that interval. And on the other hand, if the derivative is negative on the interval, then the function is decreasing. That gives us our first derivative test. Suppose that c is a critical number of f. If the sign of f prime changes from positive to negative when we're at c, so we're going uphill then downhill, that must correspond to a local max. On the other hand, if the sign of f prime changes from negative to positive, that is we were going down and then we change to going up, that has to be a local min. And finally, if you have a situation where the sign of f prime does not change, it's either a positive and then continues to be positive or negative and continues to be negative, then you have neither a local max nor a local min. So what is our strategy or method for finding these intervals of increase and classifying the critical numbers using the first derivative? Well, we need to find all the critical numbers. And then we're going to draw a number line. That's going to help us organize the information. 
Above each critical number where the derivative is zero, we're gonna put a zero above the number line. And above each critical number where the derivative does not exist, we'll go ahead and write an x. And then if there are any values of x where the function is undefined, those are not critical numbers, but they're still going to be important to answer the question. We're going to write a, uh, an asterisk or a star. And then between each of these symbols that we've written, we're going to use either test points or just our knowledge of the function to, to determine the sign of the derivative. So let's look at an example. We are asked to find the intervals of increase and decrease and classify the critical numbers of p of x equals 3x to the power of 4 minus 24x squared. So this phrase, classify the critical numbers, is just asking us to tell if the critical number represents a local max, a local min, or neither. We'll start by taking the derivative, because we're going to find the critical numbers. We'll set that equal to zero. We can solve it by factoring, and we find that we have three critical numbers. x equals zero, x equals negative two, and x equals two. Now, I'm going to write the uh, p prime in factored form. That's going to help us a lot to determine whether the derivative is positive or negative on each of our intervals. So I've drawn a number line, and below the number line, I label the critical numbers, negative 2, 0, and 2. At each one of those critical numbers, the derivative is 0. So I've written a 0 above the number line. Uh, at each one of those critical numbers. So now you can see that the critical numbers break up the number line into four pieces, four intervals. And so I'm going to have to determine the sign of f prime on each one of the intervals. And I'm just going to start going from left to right. And I'm just going to either think of a number or just at least think about what the sign of each of these factors is going to be on that interval. So if I think of a test number like negative 3, I would say, well, 12 times negative 3 is negative. Negative 3 plus 2, negative. Negative 3 minus 2, all negative. So I'll get three negatives, the product of three negatives is going to be negative. So I'm going to put negative signs or minus signs above that interval on my number line. Then I'll move to the next interval. Maybe I'll choose a test number like negative one and I'll say, well, 12 times negative one, that's negative. Negative one plus two, that'll be positive. Negative one minus two, that's negative. So then I would have a negative times a positive times a negative. That's going to be positive. So I write plus signs or positive signs in that interval. And I do the same thing for the next two intervals. And now I've completed my number line. And I can see that any interval where there's plus signs that is an interval of increase. So p is increasing on negative 2 to 0 and from 2 to positive infinity. Note that we're always going to have open intervals. So we'll write our intervals with parentheses. And on the other hand, any interval where I have negative signs, that'll in indicate that p is decreasing. So p is decreasing on negative infinity to negative 2, and from 0 to 2. And then if we want to look at 
classifying each of the critical numbers, then at negative two, I'm decreasing, then increasing. At two, I'm decreasing, then increasing. Those correspond to local mint. At zero, I'm increasing, then decreasing. That corresponds to a local max. Thank you.